Alright you know, guys, Mayhem here, finally uploading commentaries again uh, after a short break that I had from Modern Warfare 3. The reason why I had a small break was quite simply because I got bored of the game, the game got stale and it wasn't very fun to play anymore. Uh, so I had a couple of weeks break, uh, played a bit of League of Legends, uh, but now Black Ops 2 is out, going uh, back to my Call of Duty roots and I'll be uploading gameplays and commentaries uh, as often as I can. Um, this commentary is going to be about my first impressions of the game. Uh, my overall first impressions are it's a very good game. It's got a lot of potential for competitive. Um, score streaks, I am 100% against being included in competitive, but that'll, I'll save that for another commentary. Um, a couple of the positives that I think are good about this game are the balanced guns. I mean, in previous uh, Call of Duty's like Modern Warfare 3, the SMGs were really quite non-existent compared to ARs. Um, I mean, in Modern Warfare 3 you had the MP7 and the PP, and that was pretty much it you could use to even try and challenge an AR at a distance. Um, and this game, there's a variety of SMGs that all have a very similar power level. Even now, after a, a good week of playing the game, uh, players are still finding it hard to choose between the mainly the MSMC and the PDW. But other SMGs such as the MP7 and the uh, the Vector are also very good SMGs that could quite easily, um, but I, in my opinion, are, are just as good as uh, the other two SMGs that I mentioned previously. Um, so it's good to see more variety in the SMGs again. Um, also, the ARs, there's not just the ACR like you saw in Modern Warfare 3 or uh, like in the MOG on Black Ops 1, it was just a FAMAS. In this game, you've now got the, the Type 25, which is a very good AR. It's got a, a little bit of recoil, but it's, uh, it's quite controllable in my opinion. The, it actually reminds me of the FAMAS from Black Ops 1, but it's not, it's not quite as OP as that. There's also the M27, which is a, a very good AR as well. It's got a bit slower rate of fire, but it's a bit more accurate than what the Type 25 is. Uh, and there's also the M8, which is a burst weapon, which uh, in my opinion is inconsistent, but it's also very good. And it's it's finally it's good to see like a burst weapon back in the game again. That's actually usable. A lot of people are already saying, "Oh, Bunny M8, Bunny M8, it's too OP." In my opinion, because of the inconsistency in how quickly it drops people, for that reason, it should be kept in competitive because it's not a guaranteed one bomb, it's not a guaranteed two bomb, etc. Um, another positive in the game is the customization. Um, there's a lot of customization options that you can have now. Um, for instance, in Modern Warfare 3, you couldn't, there's literally only like, the red dots that you could have on your gun. On this game, you've now got like uh, the FMJ, laser sight, which is the new red dot. Uh, four grip, long barrel for the SMGs, extended mags. Uh, there's a lot of other attachments as well that you can use, so it's good to see that. There's also like this pick ten system, so you can actually sacrifice um, like one perk for an extra attachment. You can sacrifice um, like a secondary grenade for a primary grenade or a secondary grenade for an extra perk slot. So I think that's a very good addition because it means there's going to be a lot of uh, I think it might be a lot of diversity in what weapon loadouts you see players using. Uh, another positive are the maps. Uh, they're actually pretty decent in this game. And compared to, obviously, again, Modern Warfare 3, you had four maps of competitive that was used, which was, uh, you know, I can't even remember what the maps were. Dome was one of them, obviously. Um, Arcadon. But on this map, for instance, uh, on this game, sorry, there's a good seven or eight maps that you can use, some of which are slums, raid, um, hijacked. Actually, no hijacks. It's too small. And it's too easy to spawn trap. But you've only got uh, standoff, um, express. Uh, da -da -da, what's the other one called? Overflow. That's a good map as well. So there's a lot of good maps that you can use for competitive, which is good. Uh, they're all quite linear, so it means that the spawns are quite similar to Modern Warfare 2, which again is a good addition to the game. Uh, no complaints really about that. The another improvement in my opinion is the league play system which is basically an improved comp playlist um, it's basically there's uh, six divisions uh, I think there will be seven from the first of December so it's currently in a trial period so there'll be the pro league, masters league, platinum, gold, silver, bronze and then iron 
and you basically, in order to move up divisions, you have to basically win games, and after you win a certain amount of games, you get moved up a division. And the good thing about this is you get to play against a lot of the top teams, so it's good practice as well, because in scrims, they don't really give you, like, they don't really give teams a chance to scrim against, uh, like the top teams, because obviously, like, they're unknown, and they feel it's a waste of their time. However, in league play, uh, you can play against Optic, MV, um, Dominance, Fear, etc. You can play against all of those as long as you can get in the same division as them. Um, so obviously that's good practice as well. Uh, it seems like a bit more incentive as well to play it. So like a, a lot of the games that I've been in already, there's already been like teams like trying the hardest in order to like keep up the top of their league or the top of their division and then move up to the next one. Uh, so that's a good addition indeed. Uh, although the score streaks in the league play, I disagree with because there's a 6v6 one and a 4v4, and in my opinion the 4v4 one should be tailored for competitive gamers only, and then bring in uh, the public players to introduce them to that, rather than uh, bringing the competitive players to the public. But I'll save that for another commentary, because that's, uh, that's quite a debatable topic. Um, another positive is the hit reg. It's um, in comparison to the Model of 3 I find Model of 3 absolutely atrocious. But in this game, the hit reg is actually pretty good for the majority of the time. I'm not going to say it is 100% of the time because it's not, but for the vast majority of the time, I'm finding the hit reg pretty good. Um, the only the only thing that is quite strange, like having said that, is sometimes you get shot around corners and it doesn't see, really seem like an explanation for it. I'm not sure if it's just because guns can now shoot through a lot more things on the game or it is just like some weird hitbox detection, but it is quite annoying because it happens a good 50% of the time when you're getting, when you're running away from someone, you get shot around the corner, and that is incredibly frustrating. But other than that, the hit detection is pr like pretty good, so Trico done a good job there. Um, and the, the last positive I can think of is Hardpoint, which is a new game mode that's been included, which uh, it has a lot of potential for competitive as well. It's a very fast game mode, it's uh, the idea was taken, well I'm not sure if it was actually taken from Halo 4, but there's, uh, it's very similar to King of the Hill on Halo 4. Um, you have to control a point, and as long as you've got one person in that point, you earn points, uh, similar to headquarters I suppose, and it's basically um, very fast paced because obviously there's no respawn delay, you get straight in there, cut the points and then everyone is just rushing towards that base so there's a lot of action going on. For competitive, uh, I actually think it would be better to add a two or three second spawn delay um, as it it means that teams can't just instantly spawn and run out and either get shot down and it means teams have a choice to like quickly change class. Um, and there's also a lot for the customization. you could put a, um, a timer delay on for how quick the, uh, the actual point becomes active and there's also um, an option for the amount of people in the point means that you get more points, if you get what I mean. So the more people in the point, the more points you're earning, which is pretty good. Um, in theory, it's a good plan, but having tested it a little bit, it doesn't seem to work. It just it just means that there's like three or four players camped in the corner, and it makes it very hard to try and get into there to uh, try and break the point and cap it yourself, obviously. But um, my voice is going and I feel pretty ill, so I'm going to end this commentary here. Uh, I'll try and get another commentary up on Sunday, possible. If not, then you'll, I'll try and get it up Monday or Tuesday. Um, that'll be on the, my opinion, like the negatives of the game. It'll be like roughly about a six minute commentary. So uh, look out for that. If you like this video, comment, subscribe, um, and look out for more. Peace.